Good morning from the National Weather Service here in Pocatello. My name is Carter, and this is your Southeast Idaho weather hazard briefing for Wednesday, October 19th. We're breaking down a pattern change on the way for the weekend, but we will have that warm and dry weather continuing through Thursday. We talked about that this morning. Key points we're going to focus on today, due to the above normal temperatures and very dry conditions continuing through Thursday, what that means is temperatures running about 10 to almost 20 degrees above normal for mid-October. So a new record high was set yesterday again, so that's two days in a row now at Stanley. It set a record high of 74, breaking the previous record set back in 1977 of 72. We're going to be seeing some light winds and poor vertical mixing over the next couple of days, leading to a fairly stagnant air mass in place. We will see some improvements as we get towards Thursday afternoon with some breezy winds, but until then, some regional wildfire smoke and haze will exist in the lower levels of the atmosphere. Take a look at the forecast and record temperatures for the next couple of days through Thursday. Looks like best chances for breaking those records is going to be at Stanley again for Wednesday, so three days in a row, and that... Potential decreases for Thursday as the forecast temperatures are starting to cool down ahead of the arrival of our next system. Winds increase for Thursday, so talking about that better vertical mixing, helping to clear things out. We'll see some increased haze and smoke in the atmosphere uh, as that kind of works in with some smoke from the Pacific Northwest working into our area as well. But winds increase for Thursday and Friday as conditions stay fairly dry. We have a slight cooling trend with those winds increasing headed into the weekend as our next system arrives late Friday through the weekend. We're seeing continued increase in confidence for a significant pattern change, and what that means is going to be much colder temperatures, so looking at below normal levels. So we're going to be seeing highs, you know, 30s and 40s not too far away as far as Sunday and Monday. So widespread precipitation chances return Friday overnight into Saturday and Sunday, this weekend into next week. So we will have that storm impact starting on Friday night, and that says that storm shifts further east, it will bring the precipitation with it. So Saturday looks like a fairly good chance for widespread and light to moderate precipitation. Could even be heavy at times in some locations locations as a cold front tracks through the area but as we get towards sunday precipitation should shift further east and by monday we're looking at a break in between systems but that potential for breezy winds will continue at least through sunday about up to 25 to 45 miles an hour Take a look at satellite this morning. We do have a few upper-level clouds starting to work their way north up through the Great Basin today. That's associated with an area of low pressure currently off the California coast. Want to get any precip out of these clouds? So they're generally about 15,000 to 20,000 feet. But outside of that, skies will remain mostly cl- partly cloudy today uh, with clearing skies as we get towards sunset. And take a look at the mid-level water vapor. So here's in the, as far as breaking down the analysis for this storm. So we have this area of low pressure, pretty strong system, currently moving in towards the Alaska area, the British Columbia and Yukon areas uh, over the next coming days. And with that, we're going to have the high pressure ridge going to have a lot of weight on top of it. So you can see that moisture here in the western uh, Pacific. That's going to be streaming into our area as we get towards the later part of this week. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that moisture is going to be slowly working down here. This low is going to help to knock down that ridge. And as we get that moisture working in for the later part of this week, we're looking at widespread rain and high elevation snow. Take a look at the scribe burns and wildfires currently in place. So you did see a uh, shared by the Teton Valley weather page yesterday. Did have a pretty good plume uh, off the Teton Canyon prescribed burn yesterday. So certainly something to keep in mind if you're in the Teton Valley. Seeing some vis- visibility reductions as well up in the Central Mountains with recent activities up in the Salmon Chalice National Forest on a few wildfires. So hoping to get some precip out of the system later part of this week. So we do have some continued fire weather concerns over the next couple days as conditions remain very hot and dry for mid-October. The fire and smoke map this morning, air quality is doing fairly well. You can see some moderate to unhealthy for sensitive groups as you get up into the Central Mountains and Teton Valley and out towards Boise. But other than that, air quality remains good across eastern Idaho. Weather has got to look for the next five days. Above normal temperatures are expected for today and tomorrow. What's just some patchy haze and smoke in some of the lower and upper levels of the atmosphere. Breezy winds do return tomorrow across the Snake Plain and Magic Valley, generally up to about 30 miles an hour. And as we get towards Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, starting to see that pattern change become more noticeable, having rain and snow back in the forecast with continued breezy winds. High temperatures this afternoon, slightly cooler from what we saw yesterday. The partly cloudy skies will be something to help with that, but we will have temperatures in the upper 60s to mid 70s. And for Thursday, keep it with that slight cooling trend. It might fall a degree or two, upwards of four to five as you get up further north, but out towards Stanley, 70 degrees. So be temperatures, you know, mid 60s to mid 70s, staying fairly consistent for your Thursday. And wind gusts on Thursday going to be a slight increase. So after fairly light winds over the last couple of days, we'll see a slight uptick Thursday just ahead of that system breaking down. So that upper level low working through northern Canada will provide at least a few shortwave troughs passing through our area for Thursday, allowing for some elevated winds up to about 30 miles an hour. High temperatures on Friday as a result of that nor- northwesterly flow continue to cool down. This is going to be the, one of the more significantly cooler days of the week so far, with high temperatures back into the upper 50s to near 70 degrees. 
and wind gusts on Friday. That cold air has to get here somehow. So we're going to have those wind gusts again on Friday, generally about 25 to 40 miles an hour across the entire forecast area. Weekend high temperatures. So we're talking that cold down, that cool down. Here we go. As far as Saturday into Sunday, seeing temperatures drop pretty significantly, especially for Saturday and again on Sunday with overnight lows, especially following that suit. So Sunday morning, you know, it's going to be fairly cold and best chances for valley snowfall will be during that period, coinciding with low morning temperatures and best chances for precipitation at our lower elevations across the Snake Plain and our valley locations. But for Sunday afternoon, highs will be in the upper 30s to mid 40s, approaching 50 degrees as you get out towards the western Magic Valley. And here's a look at those low temperatures we were talking about. Single digits do return up into the central mountains for the Stanley Copper Basin areas. But outside of that, it looks like teens and 20s in the mountains, 20s and 30s across the Snake Plain. Nothing too atypical for this time of year, but certainly colder from what we've been seeing. Weekend wind gusts. Saturday looks to be the breezier of the two, with widespread wind gusts between 25 to 40 miles an hour. And for Sunday, seeing that continued slight breeziness, but dropping down to about 20 to 35 miles an hour. Now let's break down the probability of some QPF. So this is looking at for Saturday and Sunday, 48 hour totals. So widespread chance, you know, very good chance for at least a tenth of an inch or more. So we're looking at a widespread rain event with lowest totals as you get up towards Salmon, Chalice, and up through the area, up through the Arco Mud Lake area, as you get up towards the Dubois area as well, getting shadowed to the Pasimaroy and Lost River Valleys as well. And that's more evident here on the half inch or more. So those areas that I just mentioned do stand the chance for some light precipitation. But as we get towards those higher totals, you know, half inch or more, there's going to be a northwest flow regime. We're going to see some shadowing from the terrain influence, especially up towards the Salmon River as it runs through Salmon and Chalice and through the Pasimaroy Lost River Valleys and out towards the Mud Lake Arco area for this weekend. But as you can see, as far as half an inch or more, still looking pretty good in the eastern benches of the Snake Plain, up through the Central Mountains, Sawtooths, Pioneers, as you get up towards the Big Holes, Tetons, and down in the Southeast Highlands as well. An inch or more, these are going to be our areas where we're going to see the best chance for snowfall accumulating in pretty good amounts as we get towards an inch or more of QPF. So we're looking at, you know, good chances up towards the Sawtooths, Tetons, Big Holes, Centennials, Caribou Range, and Bear River Range for this weekend. And an inch or more of snow. So now we're talking snow. Uh, you can see at least for the Snake Plain, not looking overly impressive for seeing, you know, a widespread event. You know, probabilities are running about 13 to 30 uh, percent as you get towards Pocatello, Idaho Falls, up towards Rexburg. But totals do increase as if you get further northeast into Fremont and Teton counties, as you can see very high totals as far as, you know, one inch or more. So not looking at a whole lot of accumulation, but certainly something to keep in mind if you're headed outside of the Snake Plain. Breaking that down four or more, so we're going to see that snowfall accumulation continue, especially up in the Sawtooths, Tetons, Bear River Range, generally north and east of the Snake Plain, where that colder air is going to be setting up. And eight inches or more, so we're talking, you know, eight inches or more of accumulation, looking pretty good for the Tetons, Big Hole, Centennials, kind of those same places we've been talking about, up towards the Sawtooths as well. These areas do very well in a northwest flow regime, and with the prominent, predominant flow being coming from the northwest, with that system kind of working into our area, that will be these favorite locations for this event. Here's a first look at those totals. You can expect some changes over the next couple days, but here's a first look at kind of what we're thinking. As far as the Snake Plain goes, population centers wise, it's going to be less, about less than an inch, maybe about one to two inches. Biggest thing will be down here as far as surface temperatures. In the mountains, looks better for accumulating snow, but one limiting factor down low may just be the warm surface temperatures. But as you can see, as you get into the higher terrain, certainly some impactful snowfall, generally above 8,000 feet as you get up into the Tetons, Gallatin area for this weekend. For QPF, as far as precipitation goes, we're looking at generally about a quarter to an inch as far as widespread precipitation impacts with good chances for everybody seeing some rain and snow at some point with snow generally going to be confined to the higher terrain and best chances for the valleys will be Sunday morning. In summary this morning, do the above normal temperatures continuing with some potential records set at Stanley again for a third day today. Winds increase for your Thursday ahead of the weekend system with a big pattern change arriving with cooler temperatures, widespread precipitation, and some breezy winds with continued chances as we get into next week. But that wraps up your weather briefing for today, Wednesday, October 19th. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to send us an email, give us a call, or check out some information on our website. Have an awesome day.